Hey there guys and welcome back. A while back on the show we made this little beauty right here. That's the picture frame spline jig and it's a great unit and I hope some of you guys tried it out for yourselves. But when it comes to cutting boxes uh, I wouldn't consider this a safe jig to use. There's just not enough support for the box to cut it safely. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you guys how to turn this beauty into a box spline cutting jig and uh, make it a two-in-one. So I've really hemmed and hawed over how to modify this to make it a box spline jig as well. Um, right now for the picture frames, when the picture frame sits in these grooves here, and it's clamped onto this back support board uh, along with the fact that this is riding on your fence this has a ton of support to cut the splines in your frames and it works just fantastic but when cutting a box if your box is here and you need to cut the spline out further out this way into the box there's really no support for it and I really don't like that feeling so I think I would like to have a removable adapter for this to make these support grooves here out another say six inches. I'm never really going to make in my mind anyway uh, a box that's more than six inches and even if it was I could flip it around and have the first six inches clamped and support it. So I think the first thing we want to do is decide how exactly to modify this thing to work with boxes as well. After thinking about it for a while, I'm thinking that the best way to go about this would to be to extend this out. I think I need to start with a fresh slate. And what I mean by that is I don't want to change this setup. I want to make this as easy of a transition as I can between picture frame splines and then box splines. So the first thing I want to do is I want to cut a 10 by 10 piece of 3 quarter inch plywood to mimic this support board. And then from there I think I want to cut these out of the board. In essence, I want to make a perfectly fitting piece to fit right in here. And that will be our new blank slate for our jig. got our 10 by 10 square cut but now we need to cut the 45s off at the bottom so that it will sit in the base here of our jig so the first thing I want to do is I want to draw a line at the center point now just to verify sometimes I like to flip it around and put the mark at five inches from the other corner and you should have one single mark. Um, from that point now you want to take a trusted square combination square or a trusted 45 and you just want to draw a line from your center out to the outside edges at 45 degrees and what you're basically going to do here is you're going to cut these corners off and by doing that it should fit exactly in the pocket of of this support for your picture frame jig. So we're going to take it over to the saw and uh, I'll set my miter fence and we'll slice these corners off of this piece. 
And I mean, if this project doesn't work out, we could always uh, play baseball. <laughs> anyway, uh, corners are cut, and we can see here that that's a nice fit. It fits in there nice. Um, it evens everything out. It fills in that hole very nicely. At this point in time now, I'd like to have another sheet of plywood, 10 by 10, to go over top of that to build our actual jig on. The reason for that, of course, is because I want the cradle to support our box at the same position as our supports for the frames. So the bottom line is at this point I have nothing to fasten it to. I have nothing to make that jig out of. And how far it comes out here this way doesn't really matter because you can adjust your fence back and forth to get your cuts where you want. So I would like another piece of 10 by 10 3 quarter ply right over top of this whole thing. So then in essence that will become our support piece. This will become our alignment piece that aligns the whole box jig um, in place where we want it every time. So next thing we're going to cut another 10 by 10 inch piece of ply. Here's our second 10 by 10 piece of ply and the way that these are going to go now is our baseball diamond is going to go adhered exactly to the top of this flush along the top and each of the sides and then when that's adhered properly it will allow this jig to slide and sit perfectly into our picture frame spline jig. So now what we need to do is we need to cut the supports that will run outside here to support our box in place. So as we did with our last piece that we cut, we need to mark the center, which would be five inches, and then again with our square, in this case uh, 45, um, we want to mark our angles at 45 degrees from the center point up to each side. We have our lines drawn here now which are going to be the alignment lines for the support pieces that will eventually sit like this to support our box. Uh, but what we need to do now is get a measurement from this point here to this point here. That way we know for our miters where to cut the 45s to have it sit properly here on the outside edges of this jig. And in measuring from this point here to this point here, this is a 7 inch span. So what we're going to need to do is cut a 7 inch wide board with a 45 at each end so that it will sit correctly onto our jig board. So I'm going to head over to the table saw and I'm going to get those pieces cut up. So we've cut the 45s on this piece of ply and I'm going to use this for both sides and it'll just sit like that. So now I just need to cut it in half so that I get one for each side of our jig. We have both of our pieces cut to length now and we've given them a light sanding just to take the majority of the burrs off them. We just want to do a little test fit and at this point in time you want to take your time. You don't want to rush this part because this is the part that is going to be supporting your box at that 90 degrees to give you that perfect spline cut. So you want to make sure that what you've got here from this part is a 90 degree angle. And the best way to do that is to use your square and use it as a guide to set your pieces in place. 
So you'll set one like that and then move your square over and you'll set your other one in place. It is possible for your 45s to be off when you cut them on the table saw, so don't trust them. I mean, don't just align your 45s on the outside edge of your board and assume that everything is hunky-dory because that's the way that disasters happen. So use your lines as a guide. Use this as an edge. And I don't want to use any glue on this section, or sorry, any screws on this section because I'd hate to damage my blade. But we really have to support this now. So I'm going to cut some 45 degree pieces that will sit in here to support these box supports. Well what I have done is I've cut six of these support triangles and I have my combination square clamped on my board to assist me in setting up for my angled boards that will be the support for the boxes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, using my square in place, I'm going to glue this down to my board just like that and then I'm going to glue a support triangle in place just like that. I know that you can't really see that, so let me spin this around. So we've got the support board for our box here, butted up tight against our combination square, and we have our support triangle, which will be butted up tight to our board. And that, in essence, will help to support this whole unit. The other two triangles for each side, there's three for each, one will get glued to the outside just like this and one will get glued to the middle. And that will give full support when sliding that across the table saw bed. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this up and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to glue in the other side. I've got this one board glued up and the support piece glued in and now we've clamped our combination square on this side of the board and we're going to use that as a guide and glue our second support in place as well as another triangle for a support for that one against the backboard. I've got the one corner support it glued and screwed on the outside of the jig. I've put the screw level way up here at three inches above the table saw. There's no way we're ever going to have a spline that's going to be up at three inches. So now I'm going to apply some glue here and get this support onto this side of the jig, screw it in place, and then we're going to spin the whole thing and put a support in the middle of each of the sides. The whole time you're doing this, you want to be checking to make sure that this is 90 degrees. So this is where we're at now, and uh, I've given it a light sanding, and I have the supports here and here and as well at the back of the jig. I know in the last segment I had said that I would put one in the middle, and then my wife actually pointed out that that might interfere with the blade, and I thought, you know what, that's not a bad thought. Maybe I'll leave that center one out. But you can see here that we've left out the center support and we're still right on at 90 degrees here, front to back and all the way along. No matter where you check it, we're still at 90 degrees. And that's the important part. We've also got these jig platforms that are 90 degrees to our back support plate between this surface that supports the box and here. So this jig essentially is done, however, we want to make it compatible and able to mount onto this jig. And you remember that we cut <clears throat> our 
baseball diamond section here to fill in our gap. Now what I've done is I've drilled some 29 64th holes into that baseball diamond piece and I've inserted some of these threaded inserts. Uh, you can see that right here. There you go. There's the video. And uh, what I've also done is I've drilled the hole straight through this jig. So at this point in time now what we'd like to do is we'd like to set that board in place. We want to set our box jig in place, line everything up and clamp it together. And once we get it clamped together and everything is lined up the way that we would like it, from there I will be drilling and countersinking some holes through, um, through this jig here to mount it to our baseball diamond board from before. And once I get that done, I'll show you what's next. Well, we've got our jig attachment now all put together. Um, I'll just stress again, you want to make sure that any screws that are in there are going to be well above whatever level your blade is ever going to be. I mean, the lowest screw I have there is at three inches. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Keep your screws that hold your jig together up high. So I'll just show you the back of this jig and you can see here that we have our baseball diamond piece at the back of it and here we have our threaded rod inserts and the reason for those threaded rod inserts are for these. This is a, a jig knob with a 5 16 inch thread and of course just a 5 16 inch washer. So we have our frame spline jig that we made on a previous show and I'll just show you how these go together now. So this frame jig for the splines will sit over top of your fence. This baseball diamond now that piece will sit and slide down so that that now mates with your picture frame jig. And then these knobs from the back of the jig will now thread into those threaded inserts that I screwed in earlier and that will secure the whole thing together. Now this of course now is one jig. It works all in one piece and I, I, I don't have a miter box that I've made recently or anything, but I've got this old dovetail one that I did. But I'll just show you how sitting this box in here, you can already see that the box is fully supported. I've got about an inch and a half of space still sitting here. But with that being said, it's very easy then to support your box with a clamp against this back support board or, you know, some downward pressure and just run it through your table saw blade to cut your splines. It's just a matter of adjusting your fence over for the distance of wherever you want your splines on your box, locking it down and then running it through. Once you get that one done, you'll rotate your box, run it through, rotate your box, run it through. I would suggest clamping these boxes down. It's one extra little step that takes seconds and it'll really help you out. So there you go, boys. Our picture frame spline jig turned into a pretty swanky box jig. And there you have it. From a really cool picture frame spline jig to a multi-purpose box spline jig. It doesn't get any better than that, man. This is awesome, boys. And, uh, Give it a try yourself. Make yourself one if you feel so inclined. Just remember, keep checking these angles. 
Make sure you got 45 and 90 at the base. 45, 45 totals, 90 at the bottom. Guys, thanks again for watching, and I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.